Hi oh guys, welcome back to the workshop. In this exciting episode, as Scott Brown might say, I'm going to be showing you how to make the shelf strip grooves as seen in this piece here. I'm in the middle of a kitchen project for Andrew. I know Andrew watches the channel, so hello Andrew if you're watching. Um, and I'm going to make him some bespoke shelf strip pieces. So this is a stock item that I keep in the workshop for general cabinetry. You'd cut this to length to fit inside your cabinet and that's it, done, ready to go, nice and easy. For my kitchens and, and more bespoke items, I will actually make the shelf strips bespoke to the height of the cabinet that it's going to be placed within. So the bottom section of the shelf strip, I actually don't put any grooves in. So you have a flat section, then the shelf strip starts at the height of the bottom shelf. Then same again at the top. It just looks a little bit more bespoke, a little bit more detailed and a little bit more handmade. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. I'm going to take you through the process of how I create these grooves nice and easily on the crosscut saw. So before we jump into making the shelf strip, just a quick heads up that I've put a post on my Patreon account, which is patreon.com forward slash Bradshaw Joinery, and it contains a couple of files in there, one of them being this SketchUp file, and I've drawn out a basic kitchen carcass, which contains the shelf strip within to the exact dimensions to what I use for my shelf strip in my cabinetry. So with this SketchUp file, you should be able to open it if you've got SketchUp Pro, or you might have to use the online viewer at sketchup.com and you should be able to open it on there. But I've got all the cut seams across the top here. So on the scenes tab, you can navigate through and reference the appropriate scenes to which are in the PDF document, which is also available for download on there as well. And that contains all the dimensions predetermined for you. So you've not got to dimension it yourself to try and print it off. You can just print that document off and make your own shelf strip. So they're all on there. The model itself, you can manually navigate around and hide components. So in the tag section, if you want to see how the shelf strip works within the carcass, you can remove the face frame, remove the carcass, remove the shelf, and you can really get your head around how they all interact and work with one another. So like I say, this model is available for download on patreon.com forward slash Bradshaw Joinery. I'm going to be using American white oak for this project. This is inch and a quarter thick and the width of the boards need to be enough to get four of your shelf strip widths out of. So whatever thickness you're planning to make your shelf strips, you need to be able to get four out of the width of this board. I've just to mention the timber down on the cross cut to my length, cut lengths, plus about 20 mil. And I've ripped it down as well, so I've got a slab thickness there that will get me four of my shelf strips out with about 10 mil extra in the width. The 10 mil is important because we're gonna lose that when we've finished machining to get rid of any breakout on the edge of the piece. You need enough width in your strips that you're going to plane up to get four strips plus a bit extra. So I've planed up my sections here, so the thickness of this piece of timber in this direction is the equivalent of the shelf strip profile that we're going to end up with a finish in this direction. So the way I produce the notch in the shelf strip is kind of an experimental phase at the minute. I use a tenon disc like this, so this is what you might use in a spindle molder or some tenoners except a disc that looks like this. It's a white tool block, 225 by 30, and it takes the 30 mil cutters that look like this. So they make a standard 30 mil cutter that has a 30 degree bevel cut on it. So that is the cutter there. Well, that cutter is what I put into the crosscut saw. 
So it'll actually work against the timber in this cutting direction here and cuts across the grain on the top of the piece of timber to create this, this notch shape in one pass. Now the reason I say it's experimental is because this type of block obviously only has two cutters in it. That's not really enough to do a cross grain cut in this section of the timber. It doesn't leave the greatest finish, it's slightly rough so it does require a bit of sanding after the cut to get a nice finish. If I was going to develop this further into something that was got a nice finish off the machine you're going to have to look at putting about five or six teeth in a block or having a, a block specifically made to do this cut so it looked more like a saw blade with lots of teeth all the way around the outside but with that 30 degree angle on it but for what I'm using it for and how often I use it at the minute this is perfect and seems to do the job and was definitely good enough for the trial to see if the way of doing this would actually work. So before I go and cut any timber I've just made sure these cutters are really nice and sort of honed onto the edge so I just put them on the Tormek and make sure it catches a really nice fresh edge against that cutter so it's nice and sharp. So I'll go ahead and mount them in the cutter block and then we'll get it put into the saw. tighten it up. You can check that once it's in the saw you can hold a piece of anything really, a setting gauge or wood or something metallic against the cutter and do a rotation of the blade and you can just check if both cutters are cutting in exactly the same place. So just release the nut on the saw. Remember if your saw is the same orientation of this it's a left-handed thread, so it's a reverse turn to undo the nut. So it's righty-loosey, lefty-tighty. It's been tight there. So because this block is quite a bit smaller than the actual saw blade and the fences are quite tall with smaller pieces of timber that I'm going to be cutting I'm just going to raise the bed of the saw against the fence slightly using the new Hilti driver, it's a bit of a beast 12 volt, got four different types of heads with it I'm using the Festool Centrotech chuck because it's just slightly, slightly better design than the Hilti version and it happens to fit on the Hilti uh, multi-chuck adapter there so it's quite a nice little tool that. We're in the market for a new driver. I'm just going to use this existing piece as a setting tool for the cutter block height. If you've not got something to set this off, what I'm aiming for is the amount you're notching away from the timber. So from this point here to this point here where it exits the timber from the V, the height of that wants to be the same height as the pieces of timber that you're going to use to span between the two shelf strips that's actually going to hold the shelf up. So this is the piece I'm going to cut for a start. Now I want my shelf strip to start about six inches up from the bottom. I'm just going to mark 150 on, make that my start point, and then from the top of the timber it's going to be roughly the same again, so 150. When I've got near to that mark, I'm going to just judge it so for half a mil or half an inch off that point. Then I might do an extra cut or I might just stop slightly short of the 150 depending on how it works with the increments of the stop that we set. So for a start I'm just going to work from this bottom measurement to the 150mm up and that will give us a shelf height to the bottom of the shelf of the 150 
plus the thickness of your batten that runs between the shelf strips plus the thickness of your shelf. So if you want the top surface of your bottom shelf to be 150, you're going to have to allow or remove from that figure the thickness of the shelf and the thickness of the battens that sit between the shelf strips that actually support the shelf itself from that figure and that will be the start of your bottom cut. So let's make that first cut. After the first cut, I'm just going to add in a measurement to my next cut. And that's going to be the stock position for the next shelf height. I want to go 36mm to my next shelf height. That will be the point at which I can set my stop on the saw stop. So I've set this edge of the flip stop to engage against the step on the shelf strip cut there. So once I've made that cut in this position here, I just push the timber along and then pull it back to the stop so it engages neatly, make the next cut and then push again. The stop rides up because of the bevel of the uh, cut you've made, drops into the next cut and you can work your way along the timber doing exact increments between the cuts to your desired heights between the shelves. Before we get carried away with making any more cuts, you'll see there's quite an aggressive tear out on the back edge of the piece of timber. To minimise that, I just cut a small strip of oak and screw it to this back fence for this to act as a support against that and it will minimise the amount of tear out we're going to get. Oh, she's a nice drill. There we go. Right, so once we've done the cutting on the crosscut saw with the 30 degree cutter, it leaves this beveled edge 
slightly rough, it's just a rough texture where it's cut it from one direction. So if you run your hand over one way it's quite smooth, if you go against the grain at which you cut it, there's quite a bit of roughness there to that timber. So I used to sand that out with a multi-tool like this because it's got quite a, an angled bed, I think it is actually 30 degrees to the edge of the paper. And you can work that in the edge of that groove like that and sand that through and it works quite well, it's quite quick. I used a 240 grit paper and it sands it up quite cleanly and quite quickly. And I'd do that before I ripped anything down. So I'd sand all these grooves while they're in the wide form. And then if I was going to paint it, I'd put a first coat of paint on there and denib it while it's still in that wide section all together. And then once that was denibbed, I'd then rip them down into the smaller strips. And you want to get four out of each piece because it's the four corners of the cabinet. So then all your pieces are going to match in height from the bottom of the cabinet. So that's the key here. If you'd have machined these all as individual little strips, it'd just be a really hard work to sand these inside edges because it's just really fiddly and there's an awful lot of them. So this is the method I used to use to sand in there. But since I purchased a new tool, some of my newer purchases is the Festool LS130. It's a linear sander. And I made myself a little jig that just sits on the base pad there. So it's just a 30 degree wedge in some birch plywood that I cut on the mitre saw and I've stuck that to a piece of sandpaper. So it's just a, a piece of sandpaper onto the velcro backing that I've then super glued the, the profile that I needed onto Then I've used a bit of the remaining sandpaper to wrap around the top of that. And the joy of this sander is there's no orbital action to it. There's only a back and forth motion to the sanding. So if I fire it up, you'll see there's no side to side movement in that profile. So the, the action, because it is back and forth, you can create a profile shaped sanding pad and use it within that profile. So the idea here is that the profile perfectly matches the part we're going to be sanding and then the sander just does all the work for you so all you've got to do is locate it in that profile move along and keep working each one as you go along do an initial sanding to get rid of any cutter wobble so if the piece has moved under the cut you might see a few dips in the cut or you do an initial sanding at 120 grit then I move up the grits to up to 320 grit, depending on what I'm doing with the timber and what the final finish is. So I've raised the camera up and have a look at the results. So this is just 120 grit, first pass with the sander. And this is an unsanded one, so you might be able to hear the resistance with that one. There's quite a rough grain in that deep, the, the coarse grain there of the oak, the open pores are quite rough. And the 120 grit has just removed all of that and made everything smooth and flat. There's not any rounding of the cut or anything because the, the sander tends to cut or its action is really flat across the timber, so there's not too much rounding on the corners. And it's an, a, a perfect job of sanding that back, and it's sanded this section in here right into the point. So there's no way you're going to feel any roughness in the in the corner of that cutout with your hands because this is getting a lot deeper than your, your finger can reach within that piece. So it's doing a really good job. That's the 120 grit and I'll now move up to a 240 and then a 320. Change to a 320 grip pad, so we'll hopefully take these lines out on the slanted edge of the angled surface there that is going to show up when we stain this timber. Thank you. 
blow the dust out the drain. See that's smooth, but it's got the ridges in from the 120 grit. And after the 320 grit there, got a perfectly smooth, that's buttery smooth to touch and should give a lovely finish. That's pretty much it guys in terms of the machining for the shelf strip detail on this sawtooth section. Before you rip them down, remember that you, it's best to put a finish on this inside edge here so that you can sand it in all the grooves before you rip them all down into a million different little bits and really struggle to get a finish on that. In terms of ripping them down, I just push them under the thickness until you've got a, a perfect finish on the outside edges and then rip them down and keep pushing them back through the thicknesser and getting a nice finish that way. I prefer pushing the strips under the thicknesser than over the planer by hand because you get a much more even finish and a, a nicer finish that's easier to sand. So that's how I go about ripping them down. Remember you need enough width in that piece of timber to allow for four strips plus removing a bit of breakout on that back edge from the machining process on the cross cut plus the fact you need to plane every single strip, probably by two mil as well, and the saw cut widths to rip them down. So you do need quite a bit of extra timber to get all them shelf strips out. I have already done another video showing how the shelf strip works within a cabinet. So if you've not seen that one yet, then follow the link in the description and go check it out.